Hi, I'm Amy Cross, and today we're going to be talking about researching women in genealogy research. They have always been a problem because they just weren't recorded like men were. And I had a reader ask me about providing a video about this very topic, and given that it's Women's History Month, I thought this was the perfect time to do so. So let's dive into some of the things that make researching women difficult and the solutions on how to solve this problem. First off, let me say that this is too broad a topic for me to cover in one video. So I'm making a playlist that has this video as well as other videos that I recommend. So if you're trying to determine a female ancestor or her parents, this playlist will be of help to you. So researching women is difficult because as we move further back in time, less records were created for them. There's basically two main problems with researching women that I encounter. The first applies to women really of any time period, e even more recently. It's when you know a woman within a family and the woman's husband dies, or maybe they divorce, and she disappears. And usually the reason for this is that she's remarried again, but you're not finding her new marriage record. And therefore, because you don't know her current surname, you can't find her death record. So this is something that happens very frequently. The second thing that happens with women when you're doing genealogical research is that they are more difficult to research as you move further back in time. Because as we move back in time, women had fewer rights and therefore, they were not involved in as many records. And without records, you can't find the women. So let's address both of those issues. My first suggestion actually applies to both problems. Research all family members. You really need to do that. You need to look at her husband, you need to look at, or husbands, you need to look at all of her children. A lot of people only research their direct ancestor, but you want to see their siblings because it's frequently the siblings that provide answers to a problem. So you're missing out big time if you don't look at all of the children within a family. The second thing is get their census records for every decade. Censuses were done every decade beginning in 1790. And try really hard to look at that family through every year. And look at those state censuses too, which happened in between sometimes the federal censuses in the United States. So you want to be documenting them in every census record. Some people are like, oh, I found them in the census record, great. And then they move on and look for other things. Big mistake. You want to find them in every census record. And the reason for that is sometimes they're living with their family members. Sometimes they have a brother or sister that comes and resides with them, or maybe their parent was widowed, or maybe just needed support, and so they came to live with the family. So don't miss out on those census records. Now I'm going to address both of those two problems we mentioned earlier, but before I do, I just want to remind you to please subscribe if this channel is of help to you. And if you ring that bell, I just figured this out seriously, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. And if you click on that as well, that means that you'll be notified when I release new videos. So subscribe, click that bell so that you know when I've got something new coming out. Like this is a, if it's a bit of help to you. And please comment because that helps this video get more traction and it'll help me build this channel. It's taking a lot of time and I really do appreciate your support. So let's go back to our problems. All right, problem number one. We have a woman that her husband has died or they've divorced and she's disappeared. So solutions to that problem, I'm gonna give you two. The first, and I kind of mentioned this already, track her children in census records. Because sometimes you'll find one of her children in a census record and she's either residing with them as she gets older and you see the same first name but a different last name or sometimes you'll see those children residing with her under um, her new husband's family. And so you want to be checking out those census records for her children. The second one is marriage records. And this is where a lot of the programs kind of stumble. Um, I know that a lot of them are getting better at finding marriage records for people that have remarried. Um, I know Ancestry is you're seeing more of those marriage records and hints, but let me show you a couple of strategies for the workaround when you're searching on marriage records. And I'm gonna show you on Ancestry, but this works on Family Search, My Heritage, Find My Past. It works on any of them because they all have similar search abilities. And so this is something that you wanna take a look at. So here I have my grandmother, Georgette Paston. That's her maiden name. She married my grandfather, George William Stevenson. Now, if I wanted to search for her subsequent marriages and my grandfather died, this is my teaching tree. So this is a very incomplete tree. Believe me, my tree is better than this. 
but I use it because it gives me the opportunity to illustrate some points and I'll use that here. So my grandfather died in the early 60s and my grandmother lived to 2010 and she did remarry. So I'm gonna show you how you can find her marriage. Now, because I've already found her second marriage, it's showing up in the hints now. And that's actually sometimes how these hints work. When somebody else has adopted something into their tree, then hints knows, oh, this applies to this woman who was born at this time and died at this time. But it's also the source of some of the problems too, because sometimes if somebody does something wrong, then that hint is gonna be perpetuated to other people researching the same person, and they're going to, it's gonna drive them down an incorrect pathway. So I'm gonna show you how to search for it from the get-go. So you're in your page here and you have Georgette Paston and I'm gonna click the search button right over here. That's gonna populate her information into the search. Now I want to, and I have other videos that kind of show you some search hint, some hint, some searching tricks. And for the sake of time, I can't go over all of them. So I'm just gonna show you what I would do in this instance. So I'm gonna scroll down here and this little pencil here will allow me to change the search terms. That's the first thing that I'm gonna do. I wanna go in there and I wanna take off her maiden name because it's her maiden name that's hanging things up. Because in most cases when she remarries, she's gonna be remarried under her married name. So I'm gonna take off Paston. And in order to make this work, I need to take off all evidences of Paston. So I'm gonna take off her father. I'm gonna take off her mother. I'm gonna take off her sister. So now I don't have Paston in here anywhere. And I'm going to do a search. All right, so now I have lots of search results and I wanna narrow this down to just marriage records. So I'm gonna go down here to these filters and I'm gonna hit birth, marriage, and death. And I'm going to hit marriage and divorce. So now I'm looking at marriage records and voila, look, I have Georgette and it's missing her other E on her name, P. Stevenson, which was probably for Paston, her maiden name, to Elmer Quam, who was my grandmother's second husband. So I found this record in the index. That is my quick workaround for finding marriage records for somebody that has kind of disappeared off of the face of the earth. So again, works in any platform, take off their, pat their maiden name and only keep their married name information in there. And like I said before, look at those census records. All right, let's move on to scenario two. You're looking for a woman who perhaps lived in about 1800 or something like that when we don't have a lot of records pertaining to women. Let me tell you where you can find women in records. The first is census records. When you're dealing with pre-1850, the women will not be listed in the census record. It's just the head of the household that you won't see a woman listed in the family. So that's a hitch. However, if a husband has died and the woman is the head of the house, she may be in those census records. So don't not look for her. There's a chance you may find her in those census records under her married name. Or if she was never married under her maiden name, she might still be listed in those census records. So a lot of people feel like women cannot be found pre-1850 in census records, but that's not true. The second thing that you need to look at is look for all of the marriage records. You wanna look for um, civil records, meaning records created by the government, and church records. Church records are harder. Um, there's a lot on Family Search, and Ancestry has some, and they are out there, but sometimes they're a little harder to find and they're not as well indexed. So that takes more time. So, but they do exist, and that information may be found. As far as civil records go, there's oftentimes multiple marriage records. Sometimes there was a marriage license issued. Sometimes there was then the marriage record. Sometimes there was a marriage return, and that's when the pastor went back to the county or city or whatever, usually these are held though on the county level, and said, I went ahead and performed the marriage of so-and-so. Sometimes there is a marriage bond and there's a lot of great information that can be found in those. So look at those records. Let me add something about marriage bonds. A lot of people overlook this information. First, let me tell you why they did marriage bonds. Marriage bonds were posted in advance of a marriage. Some places required that they be taken out like a week before the intended marriage or 
laws varied. But the bond was posted by usually the groom-to-be as well as a relative of the bride. And this was putting out a certain amount of money, whatever was required by that particular county or district or whatever. And it was basically stating, I am putting up this money because I am not currently married. I am I am qualified to being getting married again. And it kind of gave the community at large the opportunity to say, ah, 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 no, you're not. And so kind of that's the reason for the marriage bonds. But like I said before, a lot of times that information, that bond was posted by the groom and the relative of the bride. So those names are important on who posted that bond. It has to be somebody that knows these guys because nobody's going to be putting up money for somebody that they don't know. All right, the next thing is probate records. Probate records frequently list the name of the wife. And a lot of people feel like if there's not a will, there's no record. That is not true. There are lots of possibilities in probate records. And if there was no will, an executor, but there was property, an executor had to be posted and frequently that was the wife. So probate records, super valuable. I've done a video on probate records and I'm gonna direct you to that for further information on probate records. The next is deeds. I've also done a video on those. Here's an image of that. Deeds are really, really helpful. And let me tell you why. One of the reasons that women didn't have any rights was because of dower laws. Women couldn't own property when they were married. Um, when they were married, they basically had no voice. Their husband owned their property. And so how does this relate to deeds? It does because because of these very same dower laws, when a man died, a woman, his wife, was entitled to one third of his estate, regardless of what he put in his will. She could take it back to court and fight it because the laws required that she be provided for upon his death and would get one third of his estate, unless he specified something more. Um, but because of that law, a woman had to sign off on their sale of property. And the reason that they did this was that a woman could then later go back if she didn't sign off on the property and say, hey, my husband's died, I'm entitled to a third of his estate and I didn't okay the sale and therefore cause a problem with that deed for the subsequent buyer. So women would go into court and testify before the judge that they agreed with the sale of this property. And as a result, through that process, deeds name wives. And a lot of people don't do that. So check out the video on deeds for more information. The next one that I recommend that you look at is newspapers. Newspapers were terrific. Not only what might you see a marriage announcement in a newspaper, but a lot of the old newspapers would have, these little community newspapers would note when somebody came in town. So voila, now I have the name of her mother or maybe a sibling or something like that. So those newspapers can be super helpful. I've also done a video on newspapers. So check that one out. Now there's going to be a link for this playlist at the end of the video. The next one that I wanna mention is church records. We talked already about marriage records, but sometimes death records that a church would hold listed the maiden name of the woman as well as the membership records in the church. Frequently the membership records in the church may provide information about her maiden name. So don't ignore those church records. And then finally, there are other records that exist and they include court records that you might find in a particular county where they lived, guardianship records, and other miscellaneous records that may have been created in the county, as well as biographies and biographical histories of a particular area. Frequently, those might mention the name of a bride's parents. So these are my top six suggestions of things to find those women that we are struggling to find earlier in time. The records do exist, don't give up, they are there and you can solve these problems. It just takes some creativity and diligent work. Be sure you take a look at that playlist right here and please subscribe to the channel and like, comment, provide your suggestions for researching women to share with everybody else. As a community, we can solve these problems and overcome these genealogy blocks. Have a great day.